So even though Media Day hasn't arrived yet, that won't be here until next week, we did get a little preview of maybe some of the answers to some burning questions from the Bulls front office, namely AK as well as Billy Donovan. And earlier today, when we got to hear from both of them in an interview on Moley and Hall and 670 The Score, definitely check it out if you missed it. But on the show, AK and Billy Donovan answered questions about the upcoming season and their approach on the new direction. And there was a lot of detail that they shared almost to the point where it was like, well, what are these beat writers going to ask on Media Day? Obviously, they're going to interview some of the players, so we'll get some varying responses there. But I wanted to share some of my key highlights and takeaways from what was said on the show and my reaction to them. And I would love to hear what you guys thought of it as well. So what's going on, everyone? You're listening to Bulls Central here. Hope you're well doing well. Now, obviously, we know that going into the season, the Bulls are prioritizing youth and player development, right? Nothing was new there. That direction was made pretty clear when they traded Caruso for Josh Giddy, drafted Montes Bucellis, let DeMar go, and signed younger free agents. But the challenge is, and we've been talking about this all offseason, is the Bulls still have Zach Levine on the roster. They still have Vucevic, as well as Torrey Craig and Javon Carter. But obviously, the biggest question mark when we were going into the offseason was Zach Levine and his future with this team. And of course, that was asked and addressed right away. AK did say that Zach is fully healthy and that he looks great, and they look forward to seeing him at training camp. In other words, they're not going to be able to find a trade for him prior to the start of the season. He's going to start the season with the Bulls. And the attempt is to reestablish and smooth things over with Zach going into the season. Crazy that we're now almost a year removed from that initial mutual agreement to find a trade with him. And here he is, still with the team a year later. Now, AK and Billy Donovan steered away from any comments about trading Zach for obvious reasons, given they're trying to get him to buy back into what they're doing. And they addressed that piece as well as how they're sort of viewing how all this is going to work knowing that they've got these older vets who still expect playing time, but also focusing on the development of younger players. And they said Zach Levine actually fits this vision of what they're trying to do as a team next season, which is playing more up-tempo. No surprise there. It's something we've been talking about for years now, how the Bulls have to play faster with better pace and getting the ball out in transition rather than isolation half-court style offense. What I was a little surprised by is that it appears anyway that Zach is actually all for this. Billy Donovan saying that Zach is open-minded and optimistic for how the Bulls want to play as well as their new younger direction. That said, Zach kind of has to be. Like if the man wants to get traded, he's got to show up well. Show up as a team player so teams are more open to making a play to try and get him. But they did say that Zach has been the ultimate pro, and this is something that I've always appreciated and commended Zach Levine on, is that even through all the ups and downs, he still maintained a sense of professionalism and trying to do what's best for the team. Like he could have easily taken the Ben Simmons and James Harden route and created a super toxic environment in the locker room or held out playing, but he's put that aside and accepting where the team is right now. Another highlight slash comment that came out of this discussion, one that was particularly frustrating, was Billy Donovan admitting and acknowledging that the Bulls have lost the analytics battle, something we've been talking about for years, acknowledging that they're not a high volume three point shooting team. And there were so many games last year where they simply could not keep up with their opponent's three point rate, which made it very challenging to win basketball games. Now, I'm sure they've known this all along, but they've never really addressed the math problem to date, in which the Bulls simply put, regardless of the talent they've always had, could not keep up with their opponents in terms of just the sheer number of shots generated. I'm not even talking about just threes. The Bulls were consistently putting up less shots than their opponent. And unless you are incredibly efficient on those shots, it makes it so much harder to win games when your opponent is getting five to 10 more field goals up than you do. Another thing to note is they did address questions around Lonzo and his health and status. For Lonzo, it was a very much a wait and see type approach for how he responds to training camp, finding out what his load is going to look like. They don't know how he's going to respond to practices because they obviously haven't seen it yet. Uh, they need to know how he responds to playing in games and determining what his minutes restrictions will look like as well as whether he'll be playing in back-to-backs. But it sounds like they are optimistic in Lonzo playing given he's already been cleared to do everything, including playing five on five. Now, as it relates to the Bulls' depth chart and how that somewhat conflicts with the development of the younger players, there was actually a lot to unpack on what was said there. Because Billy Donovan did say that they're not just going to take a bunch of younger players and throw them out there and give them playing time just for the sake of development, which I do actually agree with this sentiment. I've talked about this before and that one thing you really have to be careful of when going down a rebuild or youth movement is that you're not just putting guys out there and leaving it up to them to figure it out. 
It's why having some veteran voices out there or even just in the locker room is incredibly valuable to help with the development of the younger players. We saw what happened the last time the Bulls did this when they just threw out a bunch of young guys after they traded away Jimmy Butler. Billy Donovan then went on to say you've also got to earn it as well, which I hope also applies to the older guys like Zach and Vooch should likewise be earning their minutes, not just handing them playing time because of their status. But really the biggest takeaway in all of this, and honestly, maybe I shouldn't call it the biggest takeaway because it honestly is not that big of a surprise to me, but that's both AK and Billy Donovan emphasizing that they're looking to win. They're looking to win every game that they play. They're not focused on the top 10 protected pick. Now that said, at no point did either of them even mention the playoffs. That was always the quote unquote goal from AK going into every season before that was making the playoffs. Not one mention of that in this interview. And there was also a lot of wait and see type comments. AK saying they're going to take things one game at a time in terms of expectations and how they'll be approaching the season and whether or not they're going to pivot and how they shift things in terms of rotations and stuff like that, just based on how the season transpires. Now, I know for a lot of Bulls fans, it's maddening to hear that they're going to try and win every game, win as many games as possible in a year where they've said they want to focus on the younger players and in a year where they only get to keep their pick if it's top 10 protected. Oh, and in a draft that is supposed to be one of the deepest draft classes of the decade. But a few things to call out here that maybe will put some Bulls fans' minds at ease. One, AK has to say this publicly. He's never going to openly admit to tanking or losing as many games as possible, otherwise he would be getting a call from the league office. Two, while I don't doubt that AK actually means what he says, because he's made it pretty clear as much that he doesn't want to take steps back and wants to keep competing, but even if he does actually mean this, there is no doubt in my mind that if the Bulls are hovering in that borderline play-in range around the 10th worst team in the league come All-Star break or shortly thereafter, they're going to start making shifts to ensure they protect themselves more in keeping that pick. They're not idiots as much as people like to think that they are. I honestly think that the way they are framing up the season and keeping more of this wait and see approach is because a lot of different things can happen and they don't want to make a definitive commitment on what the future direction will look like at this point in time. They could come out of the gate and somehow look incredible with the new guys on the roster. Maybe Giddy thrives and has an all-star type season. Kobe breaks out even further. Zach looks like the old Zach from his 50, 40, 85 days. Mas Buscellis is ahead of schedule. Like so many things could somehow go right. I think it's unlikely, but a lot of things could go right where you then say, okay, this team could actually work. Let's build upon this success and make further moves next summer to get us back into contention. But then of course, the opposite could happen. The guys could just not fit well, more shooting struggles, defensive woes, maybe more injuries. They fall in the standings early. Then yeah, you take the approach of tanking to secure your pick. And then there's even the in-between route, right? Where the guys are looking decent, they're getting good player development, but it's becoming more clear by mid-season they're hovering too close to potentially losing that pick. Pivot, rest some of the guys towards the end of the season. And so with so many things up in the air for how this season could potentially go, they're of course not going to commit to anything other than say, we're treating every game as one that we want to win. The way the season unfolds as the games go on and on is going to determine the direction they take in closing out the year. Not saying I necessarily agree with that, but it is too early to just outright say, yeah, we know we're not going to be very good. We know we have a pick that's only top 10 protected. Let's just lose as many games as possible without seeing how these guys are going to look like on the court. Anyway, there were a number of other things that were addressed as well, like the Bulls' glaring defensive holes, the growth of Kobe White, how they're treating Patrick Williams and his health this season. So check it out on that pod. I'll leave a link to the description. Let me know what you guys thought on the comments. And of course, as always, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.